None of us is happy to see higher prices for the goods we want during a time of emergency. But do these higher prices actually show evidence of price gouging? A new column at the American Institute for Economic Research says that this is not necessarily what you might think. The author of that column is John Sanders, Senior Fellow in Regulatory Studies at the John Locke Foundation and the Locke Research Editor. The headline of your column is Price Gouged and Happy About It. And you actually start this with a story about a can of Lysol. Tell us, uh, tell us what you were trying to convey. Well, what I was trying to convey is that, uh, you know, here in the height of a pandemic, um, our trusty can of Lysol at home gave its last. And so I wanted to get some more. And I was finding a really hard time getting it anywhere. Every store that we went to was out of it. Uh, so I finally went online. And I wasn't able to find the normal price online. It would be listed as uh, six ninety nine, but that wasn't available. It was available from other sellers, and when I would go to the other sellers, they were the prices were going upwards of fifteen dollars and more. I ended up buying one for close to eighteen dollars. However, I got it within three days, and now I've got a can of Lysol, and I'm happy about it. Some people are going to hear that story and say, oh, this is terrible. People are, uh, who are selling these cans of Lysol are taking advantage of you. You should be paying 7 bucks. You had to pay 18 bucks. You don't look at it that way. No, I don't. And it's interesting that you mentioned that some people do because uh, one of the reviewers, you know, one of the nice things about these online marketplaces is that you can look up, is this seller a reputable person? You know, can I trust that I'll get what I paid for in a reasonable time? And that's why I chose this particular seller is because they would get their stuff out quickly. And uh, all five-star ratings except for one. And the one said was a one-star rating. And it said, these prices are outrageous. This is price gouging. And they should be reported to the authorities. And that kind of turned the light on for me. I was like, oh, that's what's going on here. Because in North Carolina, ever since this emergency declaration going back to March of 2020 was declared, we've been under our anti-price gouging law, which is why I can't find Lysol anywhere. As soon as they show up at the pre-pandemic price, they're sold out. And unless I'm lucky enough to get there right when the shipment arrives, I'm not going to be able to get one. You are trained in economics I suspect that this follows exactly the pattern that you know from your economics training, that uh, if there is some sort of artificial constraint on the prices, we're going to see happen with the Lysol exactly as it happened. Yes, and I realize it gives a lot of people hives to ta start talking about shifting supply and demand. Uh, but when you have a thing that, for whatever reason, is suddenly in greater demand, such as a disinfectant spray in the middle of a pandemic, um, and the supply hasn't changed, the price is going to go up. Um, if it doesn't go up, if the government forbids it from going up, then we'll have a shortage because the price, as an economist looks at it, is a signal. Um, it's not something that's set in stone, and that's the way anti-price gouging laws treat it. It's like the price before this increase in demand should be the same price as afterwards. And instead, that price is telling people when it shifts up, you may want to change your mind on, on how much you need of this thing. Um, and it also tells suppliers, you may want to change your mind on how much of this thing you want to bring um, because it's going to cost you more money as a consumer, but it's going to make you more money as a supplier if you can get the supplies in, which the consumers clearly want. Um, when the government prevents that from happening, it's not giving those signals. It's telling people, hey, everything's fine, just keep buying. And it's telling suppliers, nothing's changed, you don't need to bring any more. So that's why we end up with a shortage. Now, you are out a little bit more money for the can of Lysol than you normally would have been in a time of, uh, of non-emergency. But in the long run, if the prices are allowed to, to play out as they do during the normal uh, context of supply and demand, don't we end up getting back to a more normalized price because the supply and the demand sort of shift, shift out as they, as they would without government interference? Yeah, in the long run, if, uh, if the change in demand is temporary, which it likely is, um, then prices will eventually shift back down. If, if suppliers and 
consumers are able to adjust their expectations and adjust their needs in, as this goes along. Um, otherwise, we're in this weird situation where you just jostle for to be in the front of the line and hope you get lucky. What's different in this situation is normally when we have the anti-price gouging law in effect, it's because we've had a, a massive disruption like a hurricane or, or a really bad ice storm or something that's made it where you can't get shipments in. So that means that, you know, once things run out, they run out. Um, in this situation, however, shipping hasn't been disrupted at all. So going to an online supplier means that I was able to get what I wanted in three days. And that's why you are price gouged and happy yes. about it. That is the headline of the column published at the American Institute for Economic Research. John Sanders, thanks so much. Thank you.